everyone. Um, it's uh, winter solstice today while I'm recording this, but you won't get to see this until probably beginning of next week, so sorry. Um, it's been a pretty good year for books. I've read over a hundred, as a previous video has said already, and I will hopefully find a way to put the list up of what I've read. I might do it via Instagram. I haven't thought that yet, but that's what I want to do. And um, my husband has done his top 10 and top worst books of the year and he's taken a lot of thought over it and he's done it over a couple of months and been tweaking books around and everything. So his is very definitive and very thought provoking. I took a look down the list of books that I've read this year and sort of said I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. I had about 15 books and it's like right I need to get this down to 10. And even then I've still cheated. But there we are. So these are not in any particular order, but these are like my 10 favourite reads of this year. That's not to say that I haven't enjoyed many, many others, but these are the ones I'm going to pick out for various reasons. So I'm going to start pretty early on in the year, and I read this duology, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leia Bardugo. This is set within her Grisha Universe trilogy. Um, which I've not read the trilogy, so I jumped in straight with these because I'd heard such good things. They were also on the bow and get one half price in Waterstone, so I managed to pick them both up uh, and read them. I have to say, if you want a sort of Ocean's Eleven style fantasy anti-hero story, this is bloody brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed it. I loved the characters in it. The, the whole world building is pretty awesome. It just rattled along at a real pace and it kind of ends at a natural cliffhanger. And then the second book comes in and some people said it was slow and it's like, well, it's, it's got to sort of finish up where that cliffhanger ended up, which means it's going to take a little bit of time. But then when it rattles, my gosh, does it go. So highly, highly enjoyable if you want an ensemble fantasy heist story with some, let's face it, pretty dodgy characters, then this is the series for you. The Many Coloured Land by Julian May. This is book one in the Saga of the Exiles series. Um, and I'm still waiting to read book two, but I really enjoyed this. I've been wanting to read this for quite a while now because my husband really likes the series and he says like that, you know, they're Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones was around. And it's a great look at future civilization and the people don't fit into that and what do we do with them? And basically they go back to prehistory and find out that no, they're not there alone and things are pretty rubbish. And we follow quite a mixed group of characters in this um, book and how they struggle to survive and figure out how to cope with what they find on the other side of the doorway, as it were. I just, I really enjoyed this. I can't wait to read the rest of the series because, you know, apparently they just get better and better. And if you want a, a good sci-fi historical um, survival adventure story with an ensemble cast, give this a go. I think you might like it. Earlier this year, I managed to read The Court of R Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury pretty much um, back to back. I have to say, Mist and Fury was so much better than Thorns and Roses. I know a lot of people like the first one and then go on to the second one and think, oh yeah, this is really good. Mist and Fury is it's miles above Thorns and Roses. It really is. It ups the ante, the romance in it, it it's more... It's more of a solid romance rather than a controlling romance. I did not like the, the romance element in Thorn of Roses between Tamlin and Faya. I thought it was far too controlling, very manipulative, and I didn't like it. Um, but to see where it progresses in book two, I really liked. And Faya really comes into her own in this story. She actually stands up and takes control of her life. Um, being a Sarah J Mass book, um, if you like Throne of Glass series, you'll probably like this series. It's a lot more fairy based, you know, the Fae as they're calling it now. And it's a lot more fantastical because obviously we're in this completely different world. Um, but it's still identifiable because of the themes and that they go, they go through with. So I would say 
if you enjoyed Thorn of Roses and haven't quite picked up the next one yet, Mist and Fury is so, so good. I have been holding off reading the third one in the series, Wings and Ruin, purely because there was so much hype and it's like, I'm going to leave that, let it calm down and then I'm going to come to it when it's all quiet and see if I actually still enjoy it or if it's just the hype of the book. I discovered this book, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is um, the Wayfarer series and it's a proper sci-fi series following a female lead, again an ensemble cast, something I seem to have had a lot of this year, and it's a really entertaining story set in space on this ship, um, and it, it discusses an awful lot about humanity, you know, prejudice, um, relationships, your identity, things like that. I so enjoyed this book. I actually borrowed it from the library and read it on the beach. And my father-in-law looked at it and goes, oh, what's that about? And he looked it up and said, actually, I'll give that. He read it as well. So that's how good it is. Two generations. And he likes crime and really well-researched stuff. And I like the fantasy and the I don't really mind if it's not too accurate stuff. And we both enjoyed this book. If you want a decent sci-fi ensemble group that's a bit Firefly, a bit Red Dwarfish, give this a go. You're not going to be disappointed. Really surprise read of the year. It really was. Another sci-fi book that, again, I borrowed from the library was New York 2140, written by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a future, um, not too far away, obviously, um, where most of the world has succumbed to the rising sea levels, and we are in New York, and we follow a tower block of people as they try and live their daily lives, cope with extreme weather conditions and also a case of sabotage because of the good old property prices and that. I really like the sarcasm in this book, the knowing wink that someone's reading this, the nods to history and how things have happened before and are still happening now and the fact they're happening again in this future. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was a very hopeful future, um, which you don't get a lot of these days. A lot of sci-fi in our future is very dystopian, very downtrodden, very miserable and to actually read something where humanity was getting on with life, making the best of it, doing everything they can to ensure that life carries on and it was very hopeful and that was really enjoyable to read. Highly recommend that one as well. It's got a gorgeous cover. Um, the next series I'm going to mention is this one sat here behind me. This is the St. Mary's Chronicles by Jodie Taylor. Book one is just one damn thing after another and this follows Max. Um, she is a historian for the St. Mary's Institute of Historical Events and basically they observe historical events in contemporary time. It's not time travel. The head of the university gets a bit upset if you call it time travel. These are so enjoyable, such good fun, really quick reads. And, you know, you just rattle through these and enjoy them. So if you want a bit of sci-fi, time travel, um, historical stuff with a very witty character, go for this. A graphic novel that I really enjoyed this year was Groot. Uh, it's a collection of six comics that put together and follows the exploit of Groot and Rocket as they're on a long meandering travel to earth for a very personal reason for Groot. I really enjoyed it. Rocket as usual is full of sarcasm and rudeness and Groot is just full of love and hope and, it, and it's all about the people that they encounter on this very back road journey to earth. Very enjoyable little series and if you're a fan of Groot I would recommend this series. Something else I read later this year was Falling Kingdoms. This is book two, Rebel Spring, because I haven't got book one. That was a live one. Um, this was a surprise read. I've been wanting to read it since Reagan from Peru's Projects has mentioned it. And I finally got around to getting my hands on a copy in the library to give it a go, see if I liked it. And I loved it. This is more of a classic fantasy following different... Um, groups of people in a mythical world um, as poli politics rise, as families fall and as magic is dying and there's there's a lot of um, secrets uh, and backstories going on underneath and it's just really well woven together and it's not too heavy, the romance isn't too forced which is nice, it's not the forefront of the story, it's more about 
the, the political intrigue going on and the grabs for power. I would say it's a more hopeful version of Game of Thrones. Um, so if you want a more of a classic fantasy style story, try Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. A surprise historical romance read this year was Once Upon a Tower by Eloisa James. This was like book five in her fairy tale series or Happy Ever After series. I can't remember exactly which one it's called. Um, but it was a really clever look at Regency romance and expectations at love at first sight and also problems that arise from expecting too much of yourself and not talking to someone and instant love and you know problems in a marriage that people don't talk about it was it was really surprising and really enjoyable and very honest if you want an honest historical romance that isn't the classic romance um as in lovey-dovey and all that which looks more at the, um, the complications within love give this one a go i really enjoyed it and i'm desperately trying to find the rest in the series they all do stand alone but some of the characters do interweave with each other a little bit so I'd be interested to see you know if there's something else i could learn about these characters from the previous books i am picked up Strange the Dreamer by Lani Taylor. This was the Fairy Loot Anniversary box um, and this was the book in it. It is a tome so it was much larger than other books that they released in their boxes and I'd not read any Lani Taylor before. I started reading this and fell in love with it. This is like a, like a classic fairy tale you're reading where you're thrown straight into the story and you learn as you read. It's not an explanation story. This is, you pick it up as you go along and about 80 pages in, the penny suddenly drops about what is going on and how this world has been set up. And I really loved this story. It didn't go in the direction you thought it was gonna go in. It took chances um, by not explaining what was going on or giving you an idea of where the characters were in the world. It was just so enjoyable. It was so different from so many YA books that I've read recently. And I really liked it. I know it's not for everyone. A lot of people were complaining, saying, I don't get this. I don't understand this. Why have we got this new character suddenly in here? This doesn't make any sense. But I, believe me, if you hang in there and wait for that moment where it all clicks into place, this is amazing. It's so poetic. It's very beautiful to read. And there are some extremely beautiful editions out and about as well. It's my 10 books that are my favourites of the year. Like I said, I've cheated. I've got a duology. I've got a series on that list. I'm going to mention one more because it is that time of year. Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. This is the Discworld's equivalent of Christmas. But it's more than that. It's about the importance of belief. And there's a very poignant line towards the end, which I, if you haven't read it, I don't want to spoil it. But it, it's very, very apt for the world we live in. Why do we tell our children things about Father Christmas and the Tooth Fairy? And why do we do that and where it leads to as they become adults? So those of you that read it know what this is on about. But I would recommend if you're looking for a slightly festive, upbeat read, Give this one a go, it won't take you long because it's a lovely book to read. Um, so there you go, that's like my bonus one. So that's my 10 books of the year that I have really enjoyed. There are others, I mean I pretty much enjoyed everything that I read this year. Those that I didn't, I didn't finish. And those that I did, you already know which ones they are. So um, please let me know if you've done a top 10 favourite list in the links, you know, in the comments down below. Um, also, you know, contact me on Goodreads, Twitter and Instagram to show me your favourites. You know, Instagram, pickies of your favourite top ten would be lovely to look at. To see what's come up this year and what's what people are all loving and what people are not loving. And older books that people might have read this year that they still love. Um, so that would be great to see that. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, happy reading. Bye.